hello friends so already we have discussed the primary batteries what is primary battery how primary battery works what are the applications of primary batteries etc etc along with the primary battery we must have knowledge about the secondary batteries also under the secondary batteries we are going to discuss the important types of batteries which we are using in our day to day life out of which the first one is the lithium batteries basically these are the primary batteries though it comes under the secondary batteries but it also sometimes it also acts as the primary battery and this may be classified as primary or the secondary based on the choice of cathode and electrode light used in short the lithium batteries sometimes lithium batteries are also act as the primary batteries as well as the secondary batteries but it is totally depend upon what kind of the cathode and electrolyte is being used in it so accordingly they are classified and that's why they are known as the modern battery the most well known of lithium batteries is the lithium manganese dioxide battery the most commonly used lithium battery is the lithium manganese dioxide battery let us see the construction of the lithium manganese dioxide battery as far as the anode is concerned it composed of the lithium cathode composed of the heat treated manganese dioxide and the electrolyte contains a mixture of the lithium chloride lithium bromide lithium aluminum oxide and lithium chlorooxide dissolved in organic solvents like propylene carbonate and dimethoxyethane so this is the lithium battery if we look at the diagram of this lithium battery then you find that here cathode is there anode is there and these two are being separated by a separator see here this is the anode this is the anodic part of this lithium battery this is the cathode c this is the cathodic part of this battery and these two are i mean cathode and anode are being separated by the separator here yeah, this is the top part of this lithium battery which acts as the positive terminal and uh, bottom part of this battery is also there and this is the button type this is the circular type of lithium battery the same reactions which occur in the lithium battery uh -huh. at anode the lithium ions are formed along with the liberation of electron in short at anode the oxidation reaction occurs the lithium gives rise to lithium plus plus electrons and at cathode the manganese dioxide take up the electrons in the presence of the lithium ions which are formed at anode gives rise to lithium manganese oxide the overall set reaction is lithium uh, gets react with the lithium dioxide sorry manganese dioxide to form the lithium manganese dioxide and these are the characteristic properties of the lithium batteries the battery offers as electromotive force of 3 volt the batteries are light in weight and compact and they are known for low maintenance and high energy density 
As far as the applications are concerned, the lithium batteries are generally used in the electronic devices, also used as the speculators. They are also used in the clock, cameras and calculators, thermometers, car locks, etc. Now, let us discuss the secondary battery one more battery is there that is lithium sorry nickel cadmium battery it is also a secondary and the rechargeable battery in nickel cadmium battery the anode grid with spongy cadmium and cadmium hydroxide acts as the anode the cathode would be the cathode grid nickel oxy hydroxide with small amount of graphite and other compounds and here concentrated solution of KOH is used as the electrolyte see here so this is the positive terminal of this battery this is the negative terminal of this battery with these two cathode and anode are being separated by the separator So here I have shown the diagram along with the same reactions at the negative four such type of reaction occurs means anodic reaction occurs cathode oxidation reaction occurs cadmium reacts with OH minus ions to form the cadmium hydroxide at cathode the nickel oxy hydroxide take up the electrons in the presence of water to form the nickel hydroxide and the overall reaction would be like this that is nickel oxy hydroxide reacts with the cadmium in the presence of water to form the nickel hydroxide and the cadmium hydroxides in short after the anodic and the cathodic reactions the two different type of hydroxides are formed so same reactions are written here at anode which will be the oxidation reaction where cadmium gets reacted with hydroxyl ions to form the cadmium hydroxide electrons are liberated at cathode nickel oxy hydroxide take up the electrons in the presence of water to form the nickel hydroxide here hydroxyl ions are formed and as far as the overall reaction is concerned here you can say that the cadmium gets reacted with nickel oxy hydroxide in the presence of water to form the nickel hydroxide and the cadmium hydroxide and this cell gives potential of about 1.4 volt applications i mean nickel cadmium battery is used for number one is pocket calculators then electronic flashlights portable electronic appliances toys next one is photographic equipment and it is also being used for the cardless and the wireless phones so the same thing is given here that is nickel cadmium battery so in the simpler way i have added some additional points so that it will become very easy to understand all these things here now let us see the one more type of the secondary cell or the secondary battery the third best example of the secondary battery is the lead acid battery sometimes it is also known as the storage battery or it is also known as lead acid storage battery as i told that this is the secondary type of battery and it is rechargeable 
here in lead acid storage battery the lead grid with spongy lead acts as the anode then lead grid with lead oxide acts as the cathode and 20% sulfuric acid solution is used as an electrolyte so this is the diagram i mean here how the positive and positively charged electrode and the negatively charged electrodes are placed how are they arranged in the lead acid storage battery is shown here so this is the diagram you will get the clear cut idea now okay uh, as far as the cathode and anode is concerned so this is the anode lead metal this is the lead metal this is also a lead metal but which is impregnated with the lead oxide or coated with the lead oxide and these two that is cathode and anode both are being separated by the electrode light or in short you can say that the sulfuric acid is being placed in between these two here as it acts as the anode here the oxidation occurs the electrons are liberated here as it acts as the cathode the electrons are being gained the electrons flows from anode to cathode let us see how the i mean when we are using the lead acid storage battery how it get discharged as i told you in the very first lecture that during discharging the battery or the cell would be the electrochemical cell and during charging the cell or the battery will be the electrolytic cell. During discharging of cell, cell acts as the electrochemical cell in which the chemical energy is converted into the electrical energy and electrons flows from anode to cathode. Here lead acts as the anode that is the negatively charged electrode. Here oxidation takes place and PbO2 acts as the cathode which is a positive recharge electrode the reduction express so this is the very good diagram of the lead acid storage battery which gives the clear cut idea about the charging and recharging of the cell means when the cell is in used the recharging of the battery is takes place battery get recharged here the oxidation is takes place at anode here it is this is the anode the electrons are liberated and the liberated electrons flows from anode to cathode okay, this as we know that the lead sulfate sorry sulfuric acid is being placed in between the cathode and anode during the charging the dissociation of the sulfuric acid is also takes place during charging what happens here actually the electrons in electrolytic cell as i told you that during charging the cell acts as the electrolytic cell anode will be the positively charged and cathode will be the negatively charged that during charging the oxidation takes place at this electron electrons are liberated and this liberated electrons flows from anode to cathode the reduction occurs so this is these are the cell reactions which occur at anode and cathode the electrodes are arranged alternately in lead acid storage battery the electrodes are arranged alternately separated by a thin ribbon or fiber glass sheet and these are the chemical reactions which takes place during the discharging of the battery so at anode what happens here the lead which is formed 
gets reacted with the SO4 minus ions which are present in the sulfuric acid solution to form the lead sulfate. At the same time, the electrons are liberated. The net cathode, the PbO2 which is present on the cathode gets reacted with the sulfate ions which are present in the solution and at the same time it take up the electrons to form the lead sulfate along with the formation of water. The overall cell reaction would be like this that is Pb, solid Pb would get react with the PbO2 that is lead oxide in the presence of the H plus ions and the sulfate ions of the sulfuric acid to form the lead sulfate and water is also formed. During charging, what happens here? I mean, when the electric current is applied, when the external current is applied, when the potential is applied, the cell reactions get reversed. This here, the PbSO4 plus 2E gives rise to the Pb plus SO4 2 minus. Then PbSO4, that is lead sulfate plus water gives rise to PbO2 plus SO4 minus plus 4H plus plus 2 e. and the net reaction will be like this that is PbSO4 lead sulfate in the presence of water gives rise to solid lead and lead oxide at the same time, the H plus and SO4 minus minus ions are also formed. So, this is the recharging of the cell. And as I told you that during the charging of the cell, cell acts as the electrolytic cell in which the electrical energy is converted into the chemical energy and the electron flows from cathode to the anode. electrical energy is converted into the chemical energy. Here Pb acts as anode negatively charged electric reduction takes place. Here Pb SO4 acts as the cathode positively charged electric reduction takes place and H2 SO4 acts as the electrolyte. The same reactions are given here. And these are the applications of the lead acid battery. As far as the lead acid battery is concerned, it is used in the automobile batteries. It is also used in clients, hospitals. Lead acid battery is also used in chemical exchanges, laboratories. And they are also used in power plant stations, power stations, etc.